and welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Dean Perrine, Executive Vice President of JSA. Joining me today is Mr. Mike Persico. Mike is the founder and CEO of Innova Financial Networks. Mike, welcome back to JSA TV. Hi, Dean. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, Mike. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. Uh, for our viewers that don't already know, why don't you tell them a little bit about Innova? So, you know, if you look at it from a very high level sense, we're a carrier, right? Our, our services are set up that way, they're provisioned that way, they're consumed that way. I think we have two really unique differences. One, we have such a strong engineering bent and an IP aspect that uh, a, a lot of the standard carriers don't have. And, and furthermore, we're specific to the financial industry. So our MO is to connect every financial liquidity center globally. So whereas your cell phone, a tower is omnidirectional, it wants to serve every person. Um, we connect the CME to the Japanese stock exchange. We connect uh, European FX markets. And so that's the real distinction between ANOVA and say, you know, a T-Mobile. And I guess by that reference, what you would say is you're a wireless company, and that's true. Uh, the preponderance of our services are of the mobile nature. However, we do still have a very strong fiber backbone uh, to the extent that about 35% of our services run over that medium. It's where our background lied. It's where our uh, origination came as a company. When I founded it, we were a fiber firm. But over time, we migrated to being predominantly a wireless service company for the financial industry. Lots coming out of your newsroom right now, even in particular, uh, turning up a second channel between uh, Chicago and New Jersey Triangle and making some notable improvements to the Aurora to Cermak channel. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about um, those, the new announcements and enhancements? Sure. And, you know, if you think about it, it used to be all roads lead to Rome. And in, in, in reality, today, for the financial markets, all roads lead to Aurora. Why? Because that's where the CME is. And the CME has a product, uh, the E-mini product, E-mini S&P 500, that drives price formation in asset classes globally. So people want to get that price data to every corner of the globe. So that's why it becomes, for firms like mine, it becomes the epicenter of almost all of your networks. So when we add a channel from Aurora to New Jersey, that's connecting the CME to NASDAQ, to NYSE, and pushing this ES product out to people so they can consume it and, and then it affects the local markets. Uh, same thing with Aurora to CERMAC. Um, that is naturally the relationship between the products at the CME and the products that ICE have at CERMAC. And so it's a really interesting uh, you know, aspect to what we do where one location is from everything else stems out from that. And, and there's other pairs trading and, and things of that nature, but you, you can't go wrong building out from Aurora. You, you, you operate in a, in, a, in a pretty interesting niche, and you kind of always sat at the top of that, that, that niche, too, uh, with, with, with regard to the financial kind of sector. But why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about, you know, exactly how Anova gives financial firms kind of a, com a competitive advantage? Yeah, you know, to us, there's, there's a competitive advantage but we look at it more so from democratization. And what I mean by that is, you know, we want to build a product that may be faster than the uh, standard fare, than, you know, a, a, a common carrier, um, you know, their services aren't optimized from a point to point perspective and they're not trying to, right? They're not advertising it in that manner. But so we build something out and, and it's faster than that. But then the goal, is to give that to as many people as possible. 
small firms, big firms, um, you know, new firms, and level the playing field within our industry. And so it's interesting because there's a bit of a dichotomy. Yes, we are building low latency services. And yes, if you, uh, you know, uh, compare them to non-optimized offerings, they're faster. They have an advantage. But then the trick is to say, okay, how do I put this in the hands of as many people as possible to ensure that we're not dividing it into the haves and have nots? That's been something central to our thinking all along, which is we don't want to build a product for six people, the, the six people that can afford it. We want to build something that the whole ecosystem of financial participants can utilize. And, and without going into detail, the biggest way we do that is we distribute market data. Market data is one feed. Everyone gets the same feed. So while it's faster, just kind of in a generic sense, the feed that everyone gets, a five-person trading firm versus the largest proprietary shop is all the same latency. So that's how we like to accomplish our goals. No, I love that. It's a kind of a, a leveling of the playing field to give everyone a competitive advantage. I, I, I love the uh, I love the philosophy there. Um, thanks for that, Mike. Um, but what's what's next for Anova? What can our viewers expect to see from you folks um, in the next, say, six months to a year? You know, when we first started out, we were a service provider, and and sometimes you strategically evolve. And then sometimes you kind of evolve and you didn't know it, right? You know, and I think that that's how we became a hardware manufacturer, right? You know, it just over time we accrued IP and assets that when you looked at them, you said, wow, I could actually, instead of buying off the shelf, I could, uh, you know, put these disparate assets together and they could form the basis of a platform that becomes ANOVAs. And we believe that the more technology that you own, the more assets that you build and manage, it can A, be a real differentiator for your services, but B, it allows you to respond quicker to marketplace demands and changes because it's yours. You're not relying on some other manufacturer to implement something uh, in your product set that they may not see a lot of value in elsewhere, right? And so that's what's happened to Free Space Optics for Innova. And you may hear me say FSO, that's the acronym. And it's also, it's a laser. You know, oh, since 2004, we've been uh, sort of organically acquiring the technology to run our own platform. And uh, I'm pleased to say that, okay, it's six years. I had initially planned for two, but six years. Um, and we have a 10 gigabit per second free space optics technology that can go 10 kilometers. There's nothing else like this in the industry. And so this is going to be a real game changer for Innova. And, you know, you'll start seeing us uh, beat the drum pretty heavily in terms of uh, what it can do. We'll definitely have to uh, maybe do this again here in, in six months to a year or maybe sooner um, as, uh, as you guys start beating that drum even louder. So, um, Mike, for our viewers that want to learn more, where should they go? So anovanetworks.com, all one word, uh, plural, networks, and also uh, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, we're active on social media, and uh, it's at Anova. So uh, for those that use Twitter, and uh, that's we're, we're very easily Googleable, I would say. <laughs> Outstanding. Mike, thanks so much for being with us today. I appreciate it. Great. Thanks for your time. You got it. And thank you viewers for watching JSA TV and listening to JSA podcast. We'll see you soon. Thank you.